This way I have a nice flat bottom. Now it's gonna be a much easier pull. I saved a lot more clay and the important part, the most important part, I can fit way more food in here. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna talk about the next step in the beginner's playlist, which is opening your clay. Now if you're a true beginner and you don't really know how to open your clay, which is the reason that you're watching this video, I highly suggest you watch the video that precedes this. Because before you get to this next step, you're gonna have to already know, or at least have had centered your clay already. Because in this video, not only are we gonna learn to open our clay after we center, but I'm also gonna go over a couple ways that I know how to open up, and the original way that I learned how to open myself. My therapist wants me to open up too, but what does she know? She just has a degree. For those of you who are true beginners, opening up is the step that is necessary to make an open vessel, just like this, or like this. This is a very basic skill that allows you to make things hollow. It allows you to make vessels, or at least usable stuff like cups and bowls. And if you don't open up properly, you won't have a nice smooth inside. It'll be extra thick on the bottom, and you'll have to do extra trim work as well. Could you imagine if you didn't open up properly, you would just have like a bunch of clay right here? There are two primary things you really need to pay attention to when opening up after you center. Number one is that you need to leave enough space at the bottom of your clay body when you open up. If you go too far down, well, you're gonna have a bad trimming experience and you're not gonna get a nice foot. I think as potters, we've all had that experience whenever we start trimming where we wish we left a little bit more clay at the bottom to give it a little bit more give or have a nicer foot. The second thing is to make sure you pull your fingers back. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will fairly soon. Although I see way too many beginners just dig a hole down there and try and pull from that hole. You actually need to pull the clay back a little bit to make sure that you have a nice even bottom. I got a couple tricks up my sleeve for you for that first one. With that being said, let's center our clay. What you're gonna do from this point is to spin your wheel at a medium speed, go ahead and get your middle finger, and just dig right down to the center by leading with your middle finger. Make sure you keep constant stable pressure. You see this right here? My fingers are gonna start to get in the way of this hole. You might think this is a little bit worrisome, but it's actually not. You just keep on digging in with these two fingers as well. But as long as you keep leading with your middle finger, you should be fine. This little ring around the hole right here will start to go down with the rest of the clay body, as is natural. If it starts to get a little bit dry down there, there's no shame in stopping your wheel, grabbing a little bit of water, putting it in there, and continuing that process. And just keep pushing down with stable, constant pressure. Potter tip! This is the part where most people have trouble, because we've already made a nice big hole, but we don't really know how far down we want to go, and you don't exactly want to find out by pushing in further and further down until you get to the wheel head. You essentially have to start over. You've ruined your piece at that point. What worked for me when I was a beginner is I got my pin tool, stuck it all the way down to the very bottom of my clay, and just let it stick in just like this. It will hit the bottom of your wheel head sooner or later. After that, I got my finger and I put it all the way down until it reaches the clay body, just like this. I keep my finger there, and then I pull it out. This is how much space I have left, just about that much. This is the main technique that I used for quite some time to learn how to space my stuff correctly. And as you get better, you won't have to do this as much. But for the moment, this works just fine as a good old potter tip. Now this personally is a little bit too much clay at the bottom of my vessel. So I'm gonna dig down a little bit more and then I'm gonna measure again until I get the right amount. That looks like a pretty good amount to me but just about this much should be fine. Before we move any further, I want you to see something. Now this is the space where I see most beginners mess up, because at this point, they think they can simply put their hands on the inside and start pulling from this position right here, and that is incorrect. You have not pulled out yet. Before we go any further, I wanna show you exactly what I mean. This is what the inside of your vessel looks like before it is actually ready to be pulled into a proper pot.
You see this? This part here should be all the way back here and ready to be pulled. Look at all this extra clay that I'm wasting and spending. I'm gonna end up with a really, really thick bottom if I don't pull this center out all the way at least over here to be ready to be pulled. This is the mistake that I see most beginners make when they first start opening their vessels, is they stick their fingers right in here, and they might even get the necessary amount of space in order to pull their pot at the very bottom, yes, but they never pull this part out right here. Doing this is not enough. I wonder if I can like put it back together. Right after you reach this step right here, you're just gonna bend your fingers just like this, leading with your middle finger, or at least your longest finger. When I was first taught, I was taught to do it like this, with my wrists down and bend my fingers in just like this, and this makes the hole bigger. But make sure you're leading with your longest finger, otherwise you're just gonna end up pulling this part up here, and you're just gonna make this very wide, and that's not what you're trying to do. Over time, I actually stopped using this technique, and I got strong enough to just use two fingers like this. You see, and that was enough for me and we're just gonna keep pulling just like this. It might be a little bit difficult, but just keep going at a consistent pressure. Potter tip. Sometimes when you're opening up, you end up making this kind of little hill right here, and that's okay, that's fine. We did this on purpose so I can show you guys how to fix it. All you have to do is get your sponge or your finger and just lead in with your middle finger and press it right down. Go back and forth over the middle to the outside back to the middle, and back to the outside. You're gonna keep on doing this until this big hill goes away. This also helps condense the clay platelets at the very bottom of your cylinder, and sometimes prevents cracking. This is also called condensing your bottoms, and regardless of whether you make that big hill in there or not when you start to open up, most potters do this as kind of a safety precaution to make sure that their pottery doesn't crack. See, there you go, nice and smooth. This is the stage in which you can start pulling. It looks just like this. You might be able to see a little bump down here, and that's okay. This will go away once you start pulling your clay into a nice even cylinder. But for now, this is just an after effect of you bending in your fingers to make a nice even bottom. This is how we actually want it to look. We want it to look way more like this. Do you see how I've dug out a nice big donut right at the bottom? This is gonna help a lot more when I start pulling my clay body, and it saves a lot more clay. My main goal whenever I bend my fingers and make the space right here is to generally make this part right here kind of match up with the very top of this part right here, because I'm going to be pulling this into a cylinder anyway, and when I end up pulling this, I wanna pull straight up. This way, I have a nice flat bottom. Now it's gonna be a much easier pull. I saved a lot more clay, and the important part, the most important part, I can fit way more food in here. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. This one was supposed to be a really quick video. What I'm trying to do is break these down into little bite-sized segments so that you guys can understand and progress little by little instead of me just throwing a massive amount of information at you and you trying to remember it all at once while you throw. And this is a really important step, one that I see a lot of beginners make the mistake of not pulling out and bending their fingers. It makes it way easier to throw a cylinder and it makes your clay body a lot more even and you get the added bonus of actually saving a lot of clay. Remember when we cut it in half and you saw all that excess clay? Well, that stays down there and you're gonna have to trim that and when you trim that, it's gonna be much more difficult to trim your clay. This one little step of bending your fingers and making that little donut down there is not only gonna help you in the long run, but it is technically the way that most potters learn to throw. Most of us agree on doing this. If you don't agree, don't at me. But again, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. We have a great Facebook community and now we have a Discord community as well. If you wanna come be a little Dirty Potter over there. Good luck on your next throw and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. I feel like this entire video was just telling you guys to bend your fingers when you start to open and that was it. This much space is good for pottery, but not for boyfriends.